Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining thank us. Yeah, thank you for coming. Um, it's nice to have a nice little um, cozy crowd. Um, so as Paul said, um, welcome to Outside the Frame, the second iteration. Um, in the first iteration, it was me, Angela, leading workshops with six uh, women and non-binary people just around using autobiographical content to create fictional and improvisational works in an online context. And that was just like an experimental lab in and of itself. And so this collaboration with Tenant Presence has sort of come off of that to further explore how can we come together in an online space and provide opportunities for people who cannot get into physical spaces um, to also be part of this sort of storytelling theatre process. Yeah. I think part of our big challenge was how do we make theatre when we're all separated from each other? How do we create atmospheres? How do we sort of reach through the screen to each other and really sort of try and communicate? Um, because of course it's quite an odd thing, this sort of flat screen thing looking straight out at everyone. So we've been doing some experimenting with that. And um, I think also we've been very aware because we started the project in lockdown, we've been very aware of how people have been quite separated, literally separated by screens. Um, even though lots of us have been dealing with quite big stuff during this time, during the pandemic, through grief and loss, um, in lots of different ways, whether it's persons, whether it's work um, and liberty and all of those sorts of things. And of course, many people are still uh, unable to, uh, are still shielding and are still in um, working in this way and needing to. So we're, we're very keen to continue working in this frame, but it's how And um, I think it was you, Cassie, actually, who came up with the idea that one of our big things is um, perhaps if we started taking some drugs, things might get a bit better. Is that right? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Um, so I don't know. I just thought maybe we do some mushrooms <laughs> and then like try and meet in our imaginations was my idea. <laughs> well, I think that's a really good cool thing to do. So I thought what I do is um, I've got these from Sainsbury's and I thought I'd just pass them to you. Um, oh, I want some. Name. Yeah, put it if you uh, reach up, you can probably get some. Hang oh, on. yeah, okay. And Cassie, do you want one? <laughs> and I'm going to have one. <laughs> if we have <laughs> not, uh, let's see what happens yes. and see if we can make our imagination somewhere fantastical. Ooh, a chestnut, oh. my favourite. <laughs> oh! Cassie, why are you in the same room as me? What? I didn't know much of what. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. oh my Whoa. God, this is crazy. You're in my kitchen. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can go meet you somewhere. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see you in our imaginations, guys. <laughs> Whoa. Hello? This is... Hello? 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 Oh my god, uh, I feel really weirded out. Um, where are you guys? Where are we? Where? Where is this? What the hell? Ah, uh, hey Angela. Can you see me? No, a day I can see you. Wow. Yeah. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> is that uh, funny? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, why are you actually warm? This, oh, this is, is amazing. amazing. 
What? <laughs> okay. Oh, is there the something higher? No. Interesting. A day, Angela? Yeah. Yeah. Is there something in the fire? I thought it was a log. Well, it's not a log. I can see a book or something. I don't know. Yeah, take it out. I'm not putting my hand in. <laughs> I'm looking at it as well. Great, exciting. Wow. Yeah, it is a book. What have you got there? I don't know. I, I think know it's, it's, a... A... it's a random page. Ah! This What's story. story? This story is called The Grief Crow. Grief Crow. Before you read it, there's this really weird thing I'm going to tell you. <laughs> um, you know, my aunt died. Um, there, was a, there was a crow in the hospital. Um, I, uh, I went to the hospital. It was in, um, in Monaghan in Ireland. And by the time I got there, she had already just passed. But... Um, <coughs> they let me sit with her because she'd literally, um, I think I was only about 10, 15 minutes late. And they let me sit in the room with her. And uh, the window was open and there was a crow sitting on the windowsill. That's why I wanted to say that because it was so strange. And I, I held my aunt's hand and I looked at the crow and the crow sort of blinked at me. And um, I was... Uh, I was a bit weirded out, but actually I found it quite sort of, it was like quite calming. <coughs> Sorry, I think it's the smoke from the fire. <laughs> um, and I, um, I was holding her hand and breathing with her. While I was breathing, she wasn't breathing. It was very, very still and it was very strange because she was a very lively woman. She was really, she had this quite wild spirit. And uh, this is probably the only time I've ever sat with her when she's been totally quiet. And um, I felt quite strange because the, the crow was looking at us and was sort of like, almost like a witness to this moment. And as I could feel her hand getting colder, the crow swooped into the room and um, by her bedside cabinet, there was um, a locket and the crow picked up the locket and flew out the window. I mean, it was it was quite terrifying because it was like a wild spirit in the room. And um, I uh, saw it go out and I thought I haven't even looked in the locket. I didn't even get a chance to open it and see what was there because my aunt, even though she was a very lively woman, she um, she was quite secretive about her life. And um, so it was quite, a, yeah, it was quite a big thing that this crow had taken it. And the totally weird thing is, and I don't know if it's the mushrooms or not, but um, the, the moon <laughs> actually really looks like the locket. And um, yeah, it looks like- Oh yeah, it does. <coughs> Sorry, Ange. Yeah, I want to move a bit further back from the fire maybe. Oh, no, that's what? They are the love of my life. I am in a locket with them forever. I mean, forever means different things to different people, doesn't it? I love you. I love them too. You, you know. Sometimes love's just more convenience, though, isn't it? Um. What? Yeah. Sorry. This is my case. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> mm. <sighs> what 
story. Ah, oh. the washerwoman. Be right back, Cassie. Just taking a piss. Okay. In a place far from here, deep in the darkness of the forest, a washerwoman washes rags. Scrub, scrub, scrub. In her basket lies the filth of the city, her worn black hands redeeming their stains. Scrub, scrub, scrub. This smirk midnight, she must work hard, harder than ever before. In addition to the rats of every farm, every domestic, every nobility, she must return the royal robes by dusk. For the king has secured himself the bride's new bride. His sweat and slime are hers to purge and hers alone. So, scrub, scrub, scrub. I was quite young when I met her. She showed up in the middle of a letter I was writing to my grandmother. It was nearly nightfall. I was only yay tall, feeling really small, looking out my window as the tears fell. Great. Now the paper's wet. How is she supposed to read it if the paper tears? She perched beside me and didn't say too much. Not that there was that much to say. It was too expensive to unstuck my throat seems I was going to be on my own anyway. So we sat in silence together Sane and led, diluting the dread. She was still there when I went to bed. But by the time the moon had faded into the day, she was gone. different. A righteous resentment rises within me. I touch the dirt of every farmer, every merchant, every nobility, and the king himself. Fingernails filled with dirt, anger bubbling beneath my skin. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Wait, what was that? Nothing. Oh, there it is again. A light on the branch above me. Inky black wings serenading the dark black air. Sorrow engulfing me. And as it speaks, a rolled epistle tumbles from its beak. Unroll, 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 unravel. I can hardly believe it. Deep, dark eyes staring back at me. My great, great grandmother. And I know instantaneously what I am meant to do and where this portrait belongs.
Ow. Hello. Hello. Uh, 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 Rose, what are you doing here? Uh, can you help me hang this up? Who's that? It's my great great grandmother. I am the grief crow. I am beautiful. To some, I am terrifying. To those who need me, I am yours. I am a crow who visits when I am called. When someone is grieving and the pain is raw, I sit with you, I sing. You hear whatever you need to hear, a song, a poem, a message of love, a violent protest, a raw scream of pain. My claws are much longer than you would expect. Sometimes we need to hold on tight. I love my claws. My beak is sharp. Occasionally I attack. I am a wild animal. I am not here to tame. Grief is a wild thing. Oh, whoa. Oh. Oh, that was so <laughs> that was crazy. That what was so what? Those mushrooms. What are you that sort of dealer? Where the hell did you get those mushrooms? <laughs> Off a of friend. That was amazing. <laughs> I'm still feeling slightly weirded out, I have to say. I'm still sort of going, is this really my kitchen? No, wait, 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 wait. Oh, <laughs> morning. I can't come in anymore. Oh, oh no. Look, oh. my kitchen's disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what's in my background too. <laughs> I'm going to have another mushroom. Which is amazing. What? <laughs> that is so bizarre. Surprise. <laughs> I'm in another part of the same house. <laughs> I really love this, but the thing that I'm really noticing is that we are all just stuck in our frame still, though. Yeah. I can't true. Stuck in the frame. <laughs> Stuck in the frame. Yeah. Another mushroom, guys? <laughs> you insist? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Way. Hey, team, everyone on the same side. Wait, I'm going to screenshot quickly. <laughs> <laughs>